بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر آئی ایم ڈاکٹر نازیہ قمر اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر آف پیتھالوجی فضائیہ رتپاؤ میڈیکل کالج کراچی اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک ریگارڈنگ دا گیسٹرو انٹیسٹینل ٹریکٹ سسٹم اینڈ دیٹ از بینائن اینڈ میلیگنٹ لیجن آف اپینڈکس سو بفور اسٹارٹنگ دا ٹاپک فرسٹ آف آل آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو tell you the learning objectives of the today's session so at the end of the session the student should be able to discuss the inflammatory lesion of appendix and to briefly describe the tumors of appendix so let's start now the first question arises that what is appendix so the appendix is a normal true diverticulum of the cecum that is prone to acute and chronic inflammation now you can see this diagram this is the part of the small intestine the ileum and this one is should be the part of the large intestine and this has to be the ascending colon right and at the bottom of the ascending colon you can see a diverticulum diverticulum is a pouching bulging that will extend from any area of the organ and that is usually found in the GIT tract so that is the diverticulum it's a small bulging or a pouching you can also say that so that is called as the appendix and that is more prone to develop acute and chronic type of inflammation so this is the basic definition of appendix the next question is what does the appendix do Uh, according to the scientists the function of the appendix is not completely clear some scientists says that appendix play a significant role in immune and digestive health but most of the scientists doesn't agree with this statement so still it is debatable that what is the exact function of appendix but right now we only know that a person can live without appendix so if you can remove appendix there should not be any kind of health issues with the patients now the first disease which we can discuss in the topic of appendix is appendicitis so as the name indicates it's a combination of two the one is itis and the other one is appendix so as the name so the name indicates that it's an inflammation of the appendix so a scientific term definition of appendicitis is it is an inflammation of the appendix a finger shaped pouch that projects from colon on the lower right side of abdomen as you can see the position of the appendix it will attach in the bottom of the cecum cecum will present in the right side of the abdomen so if the inflammation of the appendix occur this pouch this finger shaped pouch project from colon into the lower right abdomen so the symptoms related to this area and what kind of symptoms we will discuss in the coming next slides so the next question is if you know the appendicitis then the next question arises that what are the types of appendicitis now there are five types of appendicitis the acute simple appendicitis the acute purulent appendicitis the chronic appendicitis perforation and gangrenous appendicitis and appendiceal abscess so in your book we only discuss the acute simple appendicitis acute means sudden in onset and simple appendicitis that there is not any advancement or any advance lesion occur in this acute simple appendicitis but as you go down you can find acute purulent appendicitis so the difference between acute purulent and acute appendicitis is the presence of the acute inflammatory cells in acute simple appendicitis the acute inflammatory cells is present 
in less amount as compared to the acute purulent appendicitis. In acute purulent appendicitis, the presence of the inflammatory cells, the number of the inflammatory cell is more as compared to the acute simple appendicitis. And if you can see the, if you can see those appendix grossly, of course, in purulent appendicitis, you can see exudation, pussy formation, and this purulent appendicitis is just because of the bacterial infection. So this is the only difference between these two appendicitis. Now the third appendicitis is chronic appendicitis and the difference between chronic and acute is this appendicitis can occur gradually, slowly and you can see the presence of the chronic inflammatory cells that is lymphocytes and macrophages and in this you can see a neutrophilic cells. And then you can also see a perforated appendix just because of the appendiceal tumor and uh, any other intestinal presence of any intestinal parasites obstruction and finally the gangrenous appendicitis if the blood supply of the appendix is lost because of any causes which will we will discuss in the next slides so it will leads to the gangrenous appendicitis and finally there is an abscess formation in the appendix so this this is one another important type of appendix that is appendiceal abscess in your book only acute simple appendicitis uh, will be there so, so we will discuss only acute simple appendicitis so now the acute appendicitis is common in adolescents and young adults with a lifetime risk of seven persons males are slightly more often than females i don't know the reason why males are affected um, more often than females Despite the prevalence of acute appendicitis, the diagnosis can be different, difficult to confirm appendicitis preoperatively and may be confused with these diseases. Mesenteric lymphadenitis, acute salpingitis, ectopic pregnancy, metal isthmus, and Meckel's diverticulum. So mesenteric uh, lymphadenitis is it is the second it is secondary to yersinia infection or viral enterocolitis if someone has uh, viral enterocolitis it can leads to mesenteric lymphadenitis the presenting complaints was almost the same as the acute appendicitis so so these kind of diseases should mimic with acute appendicitis same is the case as the acute salpingitis acute salpingitis is basically the inflammation of the fallopian tube and if the fallopian tube is inflamed the presenting complaint almost same as the acute appendicitis just like is in the case of ectopic pregnancy the metal isthmus the pain caused by minor pelvic bleeding at the time of ovulation and the Meckel's diverticulum so these five disease has the same presentation clinical presentation like that of acute appendicitis so these are these diseases can mimic with sometimes with acute appendicitis. So these are the prevalence of the acute appendicitis etiology. Uh, if you can see this x-ray film, this is the size of the appendix and you can see the fecolate material. If the size of the fecolate material increases, it can obstruct the lumen and it can inflame the mucosa of the lumen and it can lead to appendicitis. One another important cause is appendiceal tumors. You can see this uh, tumor in this picture. Tumor could be benign or malignant. Tumor means growth. Growth can obstruct the lumen of the appendix and it can lead to the obstruction. It can lead to the inflammation of the appendix and it can lead to appendicitis. The third one is the intestinal parasites. There are some parasites like Ascariasis, Entrobius vermicularis. These parasites can also obstruct the lumen of the appendix and can lead to appendicitis. This is the picture of the Entrobius vermicularis. You can find in histopathology of appendix. So this is the 
Introbius vermicularis egg and hypertrophied lymphatic tissue. Hypertrophied lymphatic tissue is a discrete thickening of lamina propria which often effaces the submucosal layer. It is identified, usually it is identified in the pediatric patient and it is associated with typical infectious condition like viral gastroenteritis. So if someone has got viral gastroenteritis and it's a pediatric patient, they are more liable to develop the hypertrophic lymphatic tissue. And this can lead to the obstruction of the appendiceal lumen and it can lead to acute appendicitis. Now, how the appendix develops and can have an abdominal pain and because of the obstruction the gut flora multiplies like E. coli and bacteroids and it can disturb the immune system of the appendix. So the, this is the simple pathology and if you can um, the pathogenesis in this term in in this uh, flow chart so it will be easier for you to uh, understand first the obstruction of the appendiceal lumen inside the appendix like i told you the fecolith the tumors etc etc just because of that uh, obstruction there should be a ulceration of the appendix mucosal lining this can promote microbial invasion like E. coli, bacteroids, etc., etc., buildup of mucus in the appendix because appendix is constantly secreting mucus. Just because of the obstruction, the oxygen delivery is decreased, inflammation and swelling of the appendix occur, appendiceal lumen pressure increase, blood flow of the appendix decrease, and these all can lead to the appendicitis. Now, it's very important to understand the morphology of the appendix. Appendix may appear grossly normal when inflammation is limited to the mucosa and submucosa. But appendix appear when appendix appears swollen and erythematous when inflammation extends into the muscularis propria. When the serosa is affected, a purulent exudate appears and if you can see if you can cut the appendix, you may show hyperemia, intraluminal or intramural abscess. So what you understand from this slide that if inflammation is limited to the mucosa and submucosa, you didn't see any gross lesion of the appendix. But if the, if the inflammation is extended into the muscularis propria, you can see appendix could be swollen and erythematous grossly. And whenever the serosa is affected, the last layer of the appendix, you can see a purulent exudate in the surface of the appendix. I can show you all these things through the pictures also. And the cut surf, if you can cut the appendix, you may see the hyperemia, the luminal abscess also. Now see this picture. This is the picture of the acute appendicitis and this white white area is the purulent exudate. This is the serosal surface, right? So you can see a purulent exudate in the serosal surface. If you can cut the section of the appendix you can see the transverse section of the appendix and you and see that there is a mucosal ulceration because the mucosa is swollen so it means it should be ulcerated and there is a hyperemic area the redness right so grossly the appendix could be seen like this this is the cut section of the appendix and you can see the dark black mucosa of the appendix. Now the microscopic features of the appendix. First you can see the normal histology. First you will study the normal histology of the appendix and you can see that this is the first layer, the epithelial layer. This is the columnar epithelium. Now it's lamina propria. After that, there is a lymphoid aggregation. This is normally present in the appendicular tissue. After that, 
there could be a submucosa a layer of connective tissue and then the layer of muscularis the circular muscular layer and the longitudinal muscle layer and finally we have the last layer that is serosa so now this is the pathology so if you can see the histopathological picture or the microscopy of appendicitis acute appendicitis so what should be the features maybe the mucosa is necrotic ulcerate the vessels are congested and the most important finding you can see in acute appendicitis is the presence of neutrophilic cells in the lamina propria and the most important layer is the muscularis propria if you can see neutrophilic cells in the muscularis propria layer it means that patient has acute appendicitis and acute appendicitis will be confirmed through microscopy so these are the neutrophilic cells and this is the microscopic features of acute appendicitis the presence of neutrophilic cells in the muscularis layer this picture is a acute purulent appendicitis which i told you when i tell you the types of appendicitis now we will discuss the clinical features of the appendix as you can see in this picture a patient is pressing his hand um, both hands towards the lower right part of the abdomen and this is the most important sign of appendicitis but there are some another signs of appendicitis so these are the important common appendicitis symptoms number one is the sudden pain that moves to the lower right just because of the pain and uncomfort dizziness discomfort the patient has got low grade fever the patient is also complain of constipation and diarrhea and just because of the continuous pain and the discomfort the patient feeling generally unwell and just because of these things patient has got a loss of appetite nausea and we vomiting so these are the common appendicitis symptoms now there are some important signs of acute appendicitis number 1 is the macburney sign macburney uh, as you already um, studied in the previous classes of first year second year regarding the macburney's point macburney's point is the this point is located two third of the distance from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine if you can check the macburney sign just palpate the abdomen of the patient and the patient feeling deep tenderness over the macburney's point so it will indicate positive macburney sign and it is a sign of acute appendicitis so this is a very important sign of acute appendicitis to diagnose acute appendicitis that is macburney sign and it is positive on examination of acute appendicitis but there are some another signs of acute appendicitis rebound tenderness rousing signs sauce signs and obturator sign so the obturator sign is patient feel discomfort when a patient is when you ask patient to internally rotate slowly through the hip joint while the right knee is flexed it indicates an inflamed pelvic appendix that is contact with the obturator internus muscle so this is the positive obturator sign and if obturator sign is positive it means patient has acute appendicitis now the next test is the sauce sign patient lies supine and placing your hand just above the knee ask the patient to lift the right leg against resistance of your hand this motion causes friction of sauce muscle over the inflamed appendix and it causing the pain the third sign which is very important that is rousing sign pain felt in right lower abdomen upon palpation of left side of the abdomen if you can palpate the left side the patient feel pain on the right side 
so this is the rousing signs for better understanding some videos of these signs so you can go and see these videos so it will be easier for you to understand these signs now how to diagnose appendix there are three important tests number one cbc in cbc the wbc count is increased and which cells are increasing the leukocytosis and the c reactive protein c reactive protein and we also called as the crp c reactive protein is basically um, manufactured in the liver and it it will be high when a body got inflamed so c reactive protein is a important inflammatory marker if there is any inflammation occur in the body the crp c reactive protein level is high the another important test are ct scan and ultrasound which you can see the images of the appendix and you can find out the inflammation the obstruction and any other thing which can cause which can leads to the acute appendix now again this is a very uh, important uh, thing that if acute appendicitis is not treated then what will be occur this uh, if acute appendicitis is not treated it can leads to the complications complications there are pilofelibitis pilofelibitis is a very uncommon thrombophilibitis of portal vein or uh, any other branches that is caused by infection so but this has to be um, a part of the complication of appendicitis so you should remember the name at least the portal vein thrombosis the liver abscess and the bacteremia so these are the complications of the um, appendicitis um, go and study the book and to find out uh, how bacteremia how liver abscesses how portal vein thrombosis occur in case of complicated appendicitis now the last topic is the tumors of appendix the tumors of the appendix are uh, not very much common but it uh, should be a part of your syllabus so, so we will discuss it superficially so the tumor which are uh, the tumors of the appendix are well differentiated neuro uh, neuroendocrine carcinoid tumor the conventional adenomas or non mucin producing adenocarcinoma the mucosal and the pseudomyxoma peritonei so these are the four important um, tumors of appendix uh, but we will not go to discuss these tumors uh, in detail um, in from these uh, most common tumor of appendix is well differentiated neuroendocrine tumor it is usually discovered incidentally at the time of surgery or examination of a resected appendix uh, this neoplasm is always benign so um, that's only the detail which is present uh, in the book so we will not go to dis for discuss further about the carcinoid tumor and the another one is conventional or non mucin uh, adenoma it may cause uh, obstruction and enlargement that mimic the acute appendicitis the third thing is the mucosal mucosal is dilated appendix filled with mucin and if mucosal is not treated it will leads to mucinous cyst adenoma or mucinous cyst carcinoma of the appendix the last term is the pseudomyxoma peritonei in most ab advanced cases the abdomen filled with tenacious semi solid mucin condition this is called as the pseudomyxoma peritonei it's a rare type of cancer and that's all about the pseudomyxoma peritonei we don't uh, i tell you i told you before that we will not go to discuss in details about these tumors um because in your textbook there is not much enough detail regarding the tumor so for you 
you should only remember the names of the tumor and just for your uh, information and just for your knowledge you should remember the names and uh, which one is the most common tumor and that's it don't go to the details of these things so that's all about if you have any query and if you are not understanding the topic properly you should email me and anytime and ask questions I will be for you to answer your questions Jazakallah khairan thank you very much Allah Hafiz